You guys might have heard a lot of the hubbub about banning plastic straws in the media. In late July, prompted by a few years of activism, partially catalyzed by this video of a marine biologist pulling plastic straw out of a sea turtle's nostrils, companies like Starbucks and Disney announced that they would be phasing out their plastic straws and replacing them with recyclable paper ones. Around the same time, major US cities like Seattle and San Francisco announced their own plastic straw bans, with laws threatening fines and even jail times to commercial establishments who break the law and serve single-use plastic straws. This has led to some people having some very strong positions on the topic. Only in California can you go to jail for drinking out of a plastic straw while criminal illegal aliens roam the streets, said one tweet. I like that people are mad that there is an effort to phase out plastic straws, like it's some wild leftist power play. So we just want the sea turtles to be happy, so suck that bamboo straw and shut the f up. Hey, government, you can't take my AR-15, so what makes you think that you can take my plastic straw? I don't need your permission, you are subordinate to me, and that's the world you're stuck living in. And then there's this philosopher meme from quote being libertarian, asking, how mad would the left be if you melted down straws and used the plastic to print a 3D gun? Which, I get the hackneyed joke, but if you want to try to blow your own hand off, you know, for the sake of owning the libs, I guess that's your prerogative. If you're feeling like it's more than just a little bit insane that people seem to have such intense feelings about plastic straws of all things, you're definitely not alone. But there really is a reason behind it. Here's a hint. It's not actually about the straws. Alright, for the record, and just so we could all be totally upfront about our biases, I happen to fall in with the roughly 65% of Americans who think that it's a good thing that companies are trying to phase out their plastic straws. I know that many media outlets have overblown the number of straws that we waste daily in the United States, and I'm aware that straws make up a very small proportion of the pollution in the ocean and waste in our landfills. I'm certainly not condoning the hyperbole being deployed. But I also don't really buy the argument that we should poo-poo something just because it only has have a small net positive impact. Like, not everything has to be some sort of magical cure-all and have some disproportionately large effect. I think that we are, for better or worse, the shepherds of the earth, and we should strive to keep it as pristine as possible. And that includes cutting back on single-use plastics in general, not just straws. And yes, I am sympathetic to those who are disabled or who have allergies or who are otherwise physically unable to use the replacements for straws that are being advocated. I think that plastic should be an option in those cases, but that companies and cities should strive to reduce their overall waste and consumption. I don't particularly agree with the insinuation that those are mutually exclusive goals. If you have a different opinion, I would love to hear it down in the comment section, but this video isn't an invective against plastic straw users or an attempt to persuade people one way or the other. This video is about why people seem to be getting so mad about this topic. How is it that something so small can cause such a big ruckus? This whole plastic straw controversy is a prime lesson in the power of media framing and group identity in shaping our attitudes. In the study of communication, frames are rhetorical devices that define and set the boundaries of whatever is being discussed. Frames use things like words and images to take a set of facts about the world and relate them to pre-existing cognitive and narrative constructs, or to try to define a new one, although that's generally a lot harder. In this way, frames can also be thought of as tools of cognition, as they drive how we think about a topic. As cognitive linguist George Lakoff describes in his books Moral Politics and the Political Mind, conservatives and liberals are generally predisposed to accepting arguments when presented through the lens of certain narratives. For liberals, such narratives include protection of the environment and the potential benefits of well-executed regulations. We do need to change our habits. The habits that we have are destroying our planet. The trouble with plastic is that it's not biodegradable. It gets into the ocean and it kills animals. Conservative narratives, meanwhile, include the primacy of individual liberty and emphasis on limited government. Government's gentle guiding hand will either ban straws or order us to replace this cheap plastic straw with ones like these, made of paper or bamboo. In reality, the straws themselves aren't so much the issue for either conservatives or liberals, but they are emblematic of larger issues that play a central role in how people identify themselves. And that in and of itself is enough to get people up in arms, as research from political psychologists like Liliana Mason have demonstrated. We can get pretty heated about something that's just based upon the knowledge of how the other side feels about it alone. It's called affective or social polarization, and it's less about what the other side stands for and more about how people feel about them. And it's been rising over the last decade in America. Because of this, both sides are pretty receptive to narratives that make the other appear to be out of touch with the problems of the quote-unquote real Americans. You want to talk priorities? While well, California is plagued by rampant homelessness, drug use, and human waste that's spreading disease everywhere, Here's what matters to their leaders, straws. Although it's admittedly more of a trope deployed by conservatives to parade out examples of how misguided the left is than for the opposite to occur. 
That's why you've got so many people on the right making videos and gifs or bragging about how many straws they can waste. For them, the plastic straw issue has been framed as being an infringement on individual liberty spearheaded by the political other. Which sounds like how conservatives see attempts at firearm regulations, hence why there are so many posts linking the two topics, even if that linkage seems totally random to the perspective of a liberal. But, you know, just injecting my opinion back into this, I don't understand why people think that the best way to approach this is to engage with snark, increase the amount of trash in our world, and go out of their way to piss off the people who are just trying to make the planet better, instead of, you know, earnestly approaching them, explaining their misgivings, and trying to reach a compromise. I also don't get why others see this and then decide that the only way that one could possibly be opposed to the inclusion of a mostly symbolic yet still punitive law is because they're illiterate planet trashing monsters. I mean, I do understand why, because it, political psychology happens to be one of my areas of primary research, so I mean, I, I meant that more as a rhetorical lament as opposed to a serious question. But that being said, still just... Why? So that's why people are pissed off about plastic straws. It has less to do with the straws themselves and more about the people and how this issue was presented to them. I'm curious to see what you guys think about frames, the effect of polarization, and the plastic straw controversy more generally, so please leave any thoughts about those things or anything else that cropped up while watching this video or suggest some future topics down in the comments section below. I look forward to reading all of them and answering a few of them in the next office hours. Last week, we talked about some of the various ways that politics intersects with marriage. There's not really much in terms of a comment response this week because the video was really just a way to announce that I've gotten married while talking about some of the really cool research in political science that talks about marriage and politics. But I do want to thank everyone who left a congratulatory comment as well as just the kind comments in general. You guys help give me the inspiration to continue to make this sort of content, so seriously. Thank you. Links for everything I talked about as always will be down in the doobie doo as well as links to the Facebook, Twitter, and the blog. I look forward to seeing you guys out there as well. If you enjoyed this video, I hope you consider giving it a thumbs up. If you want to support the channel, you could do so by commenting down below, by sharing this video, and by subscribing to the channel to stay in the loop for more awesome social science content is uploaded. If you want to be guaranteed to be in the loop when I upload a new video, be sure to click the bell icon as well. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.